Hey guys, what's going on? Darren here, and welcome to the start of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode series. Yep, I'm finally jumping on the bandwagon, and I'm getting involved also in the My Team season. And we're going to be starting, as always, from the very back of the grid. And the aim is to take our team from the bottom to the top of Formula 1. And it's going to be a very difficult journey. We are going to be starting from the very rock bottom. So as you can see here, we're selecting my team. And uh, it's, of course, something that's been in for a few years, but this year they've brought in three uh, conditions. You can start as a newcomer, a midfielder, or a championship contender. But as I said, we're going to be starting from the very bottom. So we're going for the newcomer. And also, you can see here, you can also select the amount of races you want to do. Of course, we're going to go with the main 22 race championship, so we're just going to select full season. And we're going to go into custom settings, because there are a few things that I want to change. Uh, this is before I've actually done any races on this game. So this is literally the first thing I did. So uh, it still said, like, driver proficiency was set to amateur, so we're going to select set that to elite, as I struggle to say it. <laughs> uh, qualifying format, we're going to do full qualifying, and session length is going to be long. So long is 50% races, so we're going to do 50% of every single race. Forecast accuracy, which we're going to set to perfect. Uh, we're going to have an increased amount of safety car, so we can increase the likelihood that we're going to get a safety car, which is exactly what we want. We want to see safety cars. We want virtual safety cars. We want to increase the opportunity that we can have anything to uh, change up these races, uh, because it just adds to the excitement. On top of that, also we can go with My Team Icons, so that's going to include drivers like Michael Schumacher, Alain Prost, Ayrton Senna, Jacques Villeneuve, and we're going to include those also into this My Team universe. So you never know, at some point, you may see a Michael Schumacher, you may see even an Ayrton Senna or an Alain Prost. Who knows who's going to turn up in this My Team journey. So, here we are now, we're just going through the uh, avatar creation, and uh, I'm just going to speed up this um, process, because, you know, you've seen all this sort of stuff before. Uh, so, I've gone with this avatar, of course, I'm going to go with the British flag, because I am British. Uh, just putting my name in, so the details, you know, first name, second name, my three letter initials, which is B-E-N. We're going to go with Bennett as the audio name, so Crofty can hopefully get that right. I know he struggles with getting names right from time to time, but I think he can at least get Bennett right. Uh, driver number, we're going to go with my favourite number, which is 25. Oh, let's focus on your driver's and, number. Yeah, that's that setup. Next up is the uh, clothing, so we're going to start with the helmet. And uh, this uh, at this point, I was like, I didn't really know what uh, colour I wanted to go with uh, for the car, but I very quickly decided on, uh, let's just go with like red and orange and black. And we'll go with that for season one, and then, you know, for season two, season three onwards, we can maybe change it up a little bit uh, if we want to, which I probably will. Um, next up here we've got the uh, yeah we've got the victory celebration which I don't think we're really gonna see much of in first season and uh, here's the radio calls. So we're going to go with nice. It's very nice. I don't think we're going to hear it much this season, but you never know. So next up, we've always got the details. So we've got to enter our team name, the power unit supplier, the sponsor, and our teammate. So team name, we're just going to go with Pulse Motorsports. Very simple. Name of the channel is Mr. Pulse. Let's go with Mr. Uh, Pulse Motorsports. Next up is our main sponsor. Um, again, I feel like this is maybe a bit of a basic one that I think everyone's gone for, which is uh, Xenon Dynamics. Um, it's simply the best, um, as he's just explaining what it is. But Xenon Dynamics is easily the best sponsorship to go with. So uh, we're going to go with that one. And the uh, goal for this is to just earn 15 constructors points this season. And with the increased safety cars, that's a possibility because we could just get a safety car at the right time, which is going to just change the dynamics of the Grand Prix, and it may just bring things into our favour. So we're going to go with that. We've got a $4.6 million signing bonus with Xenon Dynamics, and we get a weekly income of $275,000. And if we do get it, we get a gold bonus of $3.85 million. So we're going to be aiming for that 15 constructors points this season, and I do think it will be possible at a later point in the season. Now, power units. Um... 
Now, there's four to choose from, of course. There's Renault, Honda, Mercedes, and Ferrari. Of course, Honda's badged as Red Bull. Uh, Ferrari's a little bit OP. I don't think it really should be as high as it is, but hey-ho, that's where it is right now. It may get patched out. Uh, we're actually going to go with Renault E-Tech. We're going to go with Renault. We're going to make it as hard as possible so we've got the least amount of performance and the least amount of reliability. They have all their own strengths and weaknesses, so consider everything when deciding who to have. Drivers earn a claim based on their performances. When a driver earns enough acclaim, they will level up. The higher a driver's level, the more acclaim they will earn for their current team. And remember, the faster the team levels up, the faster our income will increase. The higher a driver's experience, the more resource points are earned to spend on vehicle upgrades. Racecraft is the driver's skill to effectively complete overtakes when opportunities arise. Awareness shows the driver's ability to avoid errors and incidents. Pace describes the driver's ability to set competitive lap times. Focus represents the driver's current form and state of mind. Rating is a summary of the driver's overall skill level. So, here are the second drivers that we've got to choose from. We've got Oscar Piastri, Teo Porsche, that guy, we're not going to say his name, Jehan Daruvala, Lirim Zandelli, and Gormir Samaya, I probably butchered his name, and finally Ralph Bochong. Uh, I decided, you know, I'm actually going to go with Teo Porsche. I think that's a driver who really does deserve to be in Formula 1, and I do think we're going to see Teo Porsche in Formula 1 at some point over the next couple of years. So I thought, you know what, we're just going to bring him in early. Teo Porsche, welcome to Pulse Motorsport. ...car as we sign them throughout the year. And don't worry, we can edit our look at any time from HQ. So there he is, just going through the, uh, explaining the livery. So we're just going through all the options that we've got available. Uh, I decided upon this one because I don't know what it was. There was just something about it that I actually really quite liked. And uh, one thing that's new for F122 is you can pick things like uh, the finish of the colours, which I thought was a brilliant feature to add. So we've gone for a whole metallic uh, car because I think the metallic one just looks the best. Um, with regards to the logo, of course, which can put a P. Uh, for Pulse, because it's, well, the most obvious one. And, uh, yeah, now we're just going through the uh, team branding colours. And then at that moment, I kind of realised I want to change the uh, livery around. So I want the black and the red to be the other way around, because look at that. That just looks so much better with red being, the, uh, metallic red being the main colour. Hello, Hello folks, folks, and, and welcome, welcome to this, a very, very special, special edition, edition of Paddock Pass. Pass. We're, We're here, here at the headquarters, headquarters of Formula, Formula One's newest, newest team for an exclusive first look at what they will be bringing to the sport. It's, it's always an exciting, exciting moment to welcome a new team onto the grid. grid. However, what, what makes, makes this occasion a little more special is how strikingly different the cars are this year. Yep, yep, the long-awaited new regulations are finally here, and with them, the start of the next era of Formula One. The 2022 season ushers in a change of direction to the regulations aimed at promoting closer racing. With new aero additions in the form of swooping front and rear wings, along with the new eye-catching 18-inch low-profile tires that will push tire technology to the limit. So then, the question remains as to whether this team can grasp the opportunity before them with both hands and lead the charge against the rest of the paddock. We'll find out soon enough, as the new season is just about to begin. But first, let's see the unveiling of the team's car and meet the owner of the brand new Formula One team. So this is straight out of F1 2021, which I thought was a little bit disappointing. Um, you know, we saw this last year. Um, you know, it's a, to see the same introduction again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit lazy, but uh, we'll let him off on that because it is quite a small thing. But it is something I would well, like to Well, first of all, thanks, thanks so much, much for inviting us here today. Here today. It's, it's been, been wonderful, wonderful to see behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Uh, as, as you might you expect, expect, I've got about, about a million, million questions, questions so, so let's, let's jump, jump straight in. in. It's, it's been, been a long, long time, time since we last saw a team owner take, take their, their own car onto the track, and, and the sport's, sports changed enormously in the intervening years. years. How are How you going, going to handle the responsibilities, responsibilities of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? So you know it's not going to be easy. It's really difficult to. It's really difficult just to be a driver or just to be a manager. Let's so to do both. Team yeah, it's next level. Now it's clear they're excited to have signed with you, but tell me, what is it that you think they bring to the team? It's Teo Porcher, for goodness sake. 
He brings so much to the table. He's so young, so fast. So you've obviously He's been whiny. putting a lot of work into the car. I know it's early days, but how do you expect it to feel out there? So we've gone for uh, full Most of the other traction. We are looking at the aerodynamic downforce in the car. One. Where do you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains you need to put you within reach of the other cars? Well, luckily for us, it's a new era, so it is a clean slate for everyone. Uh, but for me, I think we've got to look at doing things like Ultimately, keeping the weight down. The That's the most this important. This is going to come down to whether you can take positions from the other drivers. What is it about your car that's going to give you that edge in those battles? We've got a light car. And finally, it's going to help with us so many so specialist faster. departments working together here at your headquarters, and with such an important deadline coming up, who's getting that coveted teacher's gold star? Which group oh, it's do got you the feel aerodynamic the most proud of put right now? So much into the aerodynamic department. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been wonderful to get an insight from you and, of course, to see around the headquarters. Thank you for today. Really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching as well. We'll see you very soon. So that is the uh, introduction with Will Buxton. And now it's just to this menu. And again, this menu is very similar uh, to what we saw on F1 2021. Not much has really changed in this sense. So... Yeah, again, a little bit disappointing to see the exact same menus uh, from last year. But, you know, I'm sure that it's something that they will change uh, for F1 2023 uh, next year when they've got a bit more time, uh, given that they've probably spent most of this year in development uh, trying to design the new cars. Um, so, yeah, just going through all this again, like I said, it's all very uh, similar to last year. Um, and, yeah, we're just looking uh, very quickly at what we're where we are at in the pecking order and you can see here we've actually we're actually mid-table aerodynamically um uh, but it is really in the engine department where we are uh struggling so it, that might be an area that i have to focus on later on in the season but yep that's gonna do it for now guys so thank you all so much for watching and i will see you again soon for round one and the bahrain grand prix thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you again soon Bye.